हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ देवाशीष दास असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ग्रेटर कोलकाता कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड मैनेजमेंट इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स ऑफ एनालॉग इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशंस हाउ द एनालॉग इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स अप्लाई in our different fields of electronics in this video we are going to study about it different circuits and its part we are explaining one by one in this topic analog electronics one this course is mainly for diploma students of electronics and telecommunication engineering of third semester the paper code is ptce ae1s3 welcome to another session of my video lecture in this session we will discuss the formation and behavior of a pn junction diode in this session we will cover up the following topics the introduction to pn junction diode the formation of pn junction diode the band diagram of a pn junction diode the depletion region or depletion layer or the and the potential barrier the we will discuss one by one on this topic so let us begin first come a pn junction diode the pn junction diode is formed with the help of two types of material or the combined combinations of two types of material one is p type material another is n type material so there are two terminals the diode is a two terminal device one is cathode and anode so first the first picture is the block diagram representation or the block representation of a pn junction diode or uh, the second picture is the schematic symbol or it is a symbol diagram of the pn junction diode and the third one is the dl component appliance which is used in the our life or the in our experiments we use the diode we will see the diode in our coming slide there are two terminals one is anode another is cathode so it is the real diode which is available in the market the number of the diode is 1n4007 when we went to a shop and want to purchase the diode we if we ask to purchase the diode we have to provide the numbers of the diode so we have to provide the numbers to purchase a specific diode in this case or in the most of the applications or in our uh, most of our laboratory experiments we use this diode very much it is the in4007 diode so it is the two terminal device one is anode another is cathode so how we identify the which one is anode and which one is cathode with the help of this mark with the help of this cathode marking which is white in color the diode which we get from the market is black and one white marking is there to identify the cathode marking so in this way we identify the diode and we make the circuits so it is the schematic symbol the cathode is one side and anode is other side so this is the representation and this is the diode which is available in the market and it is very cheap you can buy with the help of just 1 rupees or something like that so the it is the diode and we will discuss the deep in the diode how the diode is formed and what are the utility of this diode we will discuss one by one so before going into the diode just take the p type semiconductor how it's formed 
because the diode is combinations of p type semiconductor and the n type semiconductor so first came the p type semiconductor the p type semiconductor is formed with the help of trivalent impurities added with the pure semiconductor the pure semiconductor semiconductor is the silicon silicon is the pure semiconductor and uh, here we take a boron atom as the impurity so boron is a has five atomic numbers so there are three electrons in the outermost cell you can see there are three electrons in the outermost cell and these three electrons share or form a covalent bond with the silicon atoms three silicon atoms and there is a one vacancy is there so this vacancy is called the hole and this hole take part in the conduction of a p type semiconductor so there are another type of semiconductor which is n type so we here we take a antimony as a impurity there are 51 atomic number of the antimony so there are five electrons in the outer mode orbit so these five electrons among these five electrons only four are form the covalent bond with the pure si silicons side by side and one electron is free or it did not take part covalent bond and it makes free so these free electrons take part in the n type semiconductor so with the help of this p type semiconductor and this n type semiconductor a diode is being formed so before going to the deep we just take the it is the band diagram we have see a band diagram of a it's a first one is the pure semiconductor that means a pure silicon or germanium the fermi level is just in mid mid of this conduction band it is the conduction band and it is the valence band we take the reference of a vacuum we just take the reference of a vacuum to measure this band distances from this vacuum it is the conduction band it is the intrinsic fermi level of the pure semiconductor and it is the valence band so there uh, the number of electron present in the conduction band is among the number of holes in the valence band it is the property of the pure semiconductor or intrinsic semiconductor and in this section we take example of the or the band diagram of a n type semiconductor it is the n type semiconductor for the n type semiconductor the fermi level is shifted up to provide excess electrons in the conduction band this ele excess electrons come from the doping doping we have seen the antimony provides the excess electron in the previous slides so the anti the excess electrons are take part in the conduction band to for the conduction of the electrons excess electrons so the more we dope this fermi level go shifted upwards towards the conduction band so in this way the fermi level shifted and this is the example of a p type semiconductor we have seen the p type semiconductor where the boron is added as impurity so the there is the conduction of holes hole is the major carrier of the p type semiconductor and the fermi level shifted downwards because the fermi level is the probability of finding electrons so they are here the less electrons so the fermi level shifted downwards so in this way we just represent the it's a n type semiconductor uh, c is the p type semiconductor and a is a intrinsic semiconductor so we have so shown here the band diagram of a intrinsic semiconductor the n type semiconductor and a p type semiconductor so we just take the comparison between the intrinsic n type and p type semiconductor with the help of this diagram
and the uh, difference between this conduction band and valence band is known as the band gap you all know the band gap is same for these three types of material but the Fermi level shifted due to the impurity added to this pure semiconductor this pure semiconductor the Fermi level lies just in between the, con the conduction band and valence band and the Fermi level will get shifted towards upwards or downwards just due to the adding of impurity of p-type material or the n-type material in this way we just identify these classifications of semiconductors now we take just some notes the p-type and the n-type semiconductors taken separately are of very limited use if we join a piece of p-type material to a piece of n-type material such that the crystal structure remain continuous at boundary a p-n junction is formed so in this way just we have to take this point the boundary should be continuous remain continuous at the boundary the structure the crystal structure remain continuous at the boundary this is very important point to formation of the pn junction semiconductor the diode so a pn junction cannot be produced by simply pushing two pieces together or by welding etc because it gives rise to discontinuities across the crystal structures special fabrication techniques are adopted to form a pn junction the formation of depletion region so we just read it out and after that we will explain one by one the excess electrons in the n region cross the junction and combine with the excess hole in p region n region lost its electron become positively charged and p region accepts the electrons it become negatively charged at one point the majority action is stopped the migration action stop that means the, there will be no flow of electrons in between the junctions so the migration action stop we'll discuss one by one and addition electrons from the n region are repelled by the net negative charge of the p region similarly an addition of holes from the p regions are repelled by the net positive charge from the n region the net result a creation of a thin layer of each side of the junction which is depleted or empty of mobile charge carriers this is known as the depletion layer thickness is in the order of 10 to the power 6 meter that means micrometer <coughs> the depletion region or the layer contains no free and mobile charges carrier but only fixed and immobile ions its width depends upon the doping level heavily doped the thin depletion region lightly doped thick depletion region so whatever we discuss we'll just discuss it one by one with the help of pictures so that we can understand it better so first it is the p-type material and it's a n-type material so the p-type material has excess holes that means that they are the positive charge in nature the holes are the positive charge in nature so the p-type material has the positive charge or excess charge and they are the majority carrier in the p-type semiconductors and it is the n-type semiconductors where the electrons are the majority carriers so the it is the minus symbols are there they are the symbols of electrons this picture is before the junction form this picture is separate p-type and n-type material so first thing 
which when the junction is being formed then what happened there is a concentration gradient that that means there is a concentration difference between the p type material and the n type material the p type is full of positive charges and n type material is full of negative charges so what happened a depletion occurs the positive charge get attracted towards the n type material and the electrons are get attracted towards the p type material one other thing i should have to mention when the p type material and n type material are not formed that means they are separate in nature they are neutral in nature that means the electrons are the majority carrier in the n type and in the whole are the majority carrier in the p type but the they are neutral in nature that means no charges are there in the p type and the n type though electron and holes are there to conduct in between so when the this positive charge of p type or the holes are from the p type material are diffused towards the n type material the n type material get positive charge and the when the electrons from the n type material are diffused towards the p type material the p type material get negatively charged so in this way there is a charge distributions occur and the so we can see in this picture a depletion region forms the p type material gets electron and it becomes negatively charged and in the n type material the holes are diffused towards n type material and it's get positively charged so this excess positive charge allow to stop this flow of holes from the p type material and this excess negatively charged are repel or stop the flow of electrons from the n type material in this way a equilibrium occurs and the diffusion process is get stopped and the there is a depletion called the depletion region is being formed just junction of this p type material and n type material and where there is no free holes or electrons are present so this is the depletion region how the depletion region is formed we just discuss and in this way the depletion region forms so this is the band diagram of the p type material and the n type material and the how when the junction is being formed so we just see it is the before the junction is being formed for the p type material the fermi level is just near to the valence band of the semiconductor and in case of n type material the fermi level is just near to the conduction band of the semiconductor and we have to keep in mind this p type material and n type material are formed with the same type material so the band difference that means the band gap of the conduction band and the valence band are same for the both p type material and the n type material so it is the before the band or it is the before the junction is being formed and when the junction is being formed they are get into the equilibrium state and there is a band bending in the or the just across the junction of the p type material and n type material and we can and the this portion the bending portion is the width of the depletion region this bending portion of the band is the width of the depletion region we just keep in mind is very carefully that this bending portion is the width of the depletion region and the structure is neutral in nature and the in this way a pn junction is created and 
another thing here is a voltmeter and this is a zero bias state that means there is no potential difference applied across the p type material and the n type material so in this way a pn junction is being formed and here is the representation how the pn junction band diagram is looks like so it is the in this picture we can see the first the red to take the red line which is show the it is the p type material so the holes are going to the inside and in the p type material the hole concentration it is the representation of hole concentration the red line shows the hole concentration uh, in the p type material the hole concentration is maximum and as they go to the in section the hole concentration get decrease in the in section the minority carriers are whole that is why the hole concentration get decrease and in n side the electron concentration are the majority so it is the maximum and when it crosses the junction and it's come into the p side section the electron concentration get reduced or decrease so here we can see the electron concentration hole concentration and how the depletion regions are spreaded in this section you can see its representation it is another diagram where we can see in the depletion region in the n section there is a positive charge and the p section there is a negative charge and it is the representation of charge distributions and is charge density electric field and the potential in the potential we can see how the potential is increase it is the negative potential so in the n section it is the neutral first it is neutral in nature as the electrons are get injected or diffused towards the p type so the potential is increase in the negative section and the it looks like this you will understand it very properly then comes the potential barrier the electrons in the n region have to climb to potential hill in order to reach the p region electrons trying to cross from the n region to p region experience a retardating field of the barrier and therefore repelled similarly for the holes for p region potential does produce are called the potential barrier the germanium in case of the germanium this potential barrier is 0.3 volt and for silicon the potential barrier is 0.7 volt so these are the all things which is related to a pn junction now we just take a animation of this whole thing to understand the pn junction very carefully so just take a the animation of this pn junction and we will understand the whole thing and we just summarize the whole thing with the help of this animation before we take the animation we just take this it is the potential barrier how the potential barrier is being formed we just take the potential barrier here the electrons are in the from the inside the electrons are get diffused towards the p side and the from the p side the holes are get diffused towards the n side and there is a internal potential barrier built in that is why it is called the built in potential the another name is this potential is called the built in potential 
and this built-in potential cannot be measured with the help of external because it is a very little amount of potential so this cannot be measured with the help of the external multimeter so in this way a built-in potential occurs and most importantly to flow the electron from the other in current flow this potential barrier has to be overcome to make the current flow we'll discuss so just take the animation of this thing junction diode properties and uses formation of the pn junction the p type semiconductor has an excess number of holes therefore holes are the majority carriers of charge in p type semiconductors as shown Similarly, n-type semiconductors has an excess number of electrons. Therefore, electrons are the majority carriers of charge in n-type semiconductors, as shown. The combination of p-type and n-type semiconductors results in a junction. This combination has many applications in electronic devices. When a p-type semiconductor is suitably joined to an n-type semiconductor, a contact is established between them and is called a p-n junction. Formation of depletion region. The p-n junction formed out of the p-type and n-type semiconductor separates p-type semiconductors from the n-type semiconductors. However, because of the contact, some of the electrons from the n-side enter the p-side. Similarly, some of the holes from the p-side enter into the n-side. So, at the junction, these electrons and holes combine with each other. The hole and electron neutralize each other on such recombination as shown. Therefore, in the region close to the junction, only negative ions are left behind on the p-side and only positive ions on the n-side. This results in the formation of a narrow charged region on either side of the p-n junction. The n-type semiconductor close to the junction becomes positively charged, and the p-type semiconductor close to the junction becomes negatively charged. On either side of the junction, the region D becomes free from mobile charge carriers. That is to say, on the n-type side of D, no free electrons exist, and the p-type side of D, no holes exist. In the region of D, only a mobile donor and acceptor ions exist. The region close to the p-n junction is depleted of mobile charge carriers and is called the depletion region. Since on either side of the junction J, stationary positive and negative charges exist, there is an electric potential difference of V-D between the edges of 1 and 2 of D. This potential difference V-D across the junction is called the potential barrier as it prevents further movement of holes and electrons. This combination described becomes a p-n junction diode. Thank you for watching. If you have any queries, you can contact to me. The contact number is given. The same number can be used as WhatsApp number. If you have any queries or doubt, you can call me or WhatsApp me to this number. Thank you very much.